Hello, I am Alok Sarma Kafle. In this video, I will be talking about one of the application of convolution neural network models. Uh, here, I am building convolution neural network model by using TensorFlow Keras, uh, where I am basically doing an image classification problem to detect cracks in pavement. So, I have images with um, cracked pavement and images with non cracked uh, pavement without cracks, where I will be performing the task. So like I said, the objective of this project is to train a convolution neural network model to classify images of cracked and uncracked pavements and concretes. So the first thing was to collect the data. This is one of the examples of the data that I collected, basically an image of cracked concrete that I clicked around the Mario University. So one of the tasks I performed after clicking images was to try to increase the number of images in my database. So basically, if I have one image like this, something that I performed was to split the, this image into different uh, images. So I use this style maze image splitter application by uh, Idzik F Prime to perform image splitting. And uh, in this example, you can see this image, I divided it into four tiles and I basically converted this one image into four images but something that I had to notice in this task was the reason that I did not do it in Python was uh, once I split these images like this it is not definite that on every photo there will be cracks on every image so once I split the image I had to go through the images once again to make sure every image has cracks for example, in some events, the cracks would go like this and this style would miss the crack at all. So I removed those images uh, one by one so that uh, the data set would be correct. So after splitting the images and having a lot more images in my database now, uh, next thing was to input the data into the Python environment. Uh, and I did that by using CV2 function from the OpenCV Python package. So once I had images in Python, I also increased the number of images I had basically by also rotating those images and every rotation can be treated as a new image file for the model. So basically for this one image that uh, we can see here, I rotated it by 90 degrees. So this is the actual image rotated by 90 degree, 180 degree and 270 degree. So basically the first initial image that I clicked on the ground has now converted I split it into four tiles and each, four, each tile will have uh, four rotations angle to it. So one image has basically converted into 16 images now, given that all the tiles had cracks in it, of course. And something that I also maintained here was uh, the image size. So for every image, I maintained the image size of 256 by 256. So that it's easier to give into the uh, CNN model later on when I build it. So this is basically the code of what I just talked about. I'm looking into the folder to for the images here and then I'm rotating the images by 90 degree, 180 degree and 270 degree, which basically is 90 degree counterclockwise. And I'm appending those images as a separate image file so that I have more number of images in my database. So after doing all this, I had a total of 14,096 images in my database that I had in my Python. But something that I maintained here was to intentionally keep the number of cracked and uncracked images equal, which I performed by removing some of the uncracked images uh, so that there wouldn't be any bias when I'm trying to train the model. And of course, cracked images, I rotated it by 90, 180 and 270 degree and uncracked images, I only rotated it by 180 degree because I already had a lot of those images. And our uh, training testing split, I performed with 80 and 20 by using the taint test split from SKLon library. So this is just looking into the data from the Python environment. So I build a small function where I can pr print five random images of uncracked concrete and five random images from the cracked concrete that I'm just verifying are being labeled properly in Python. And as I said earlier, I'm maintaining the size of 250 by 250, as you can see for the all images. So now to build the actual model itself, uh, let me talk about the model architecture I have. I basically have 13 different layers. So I have three sets of convolution max pooling and dropout layer. Which what I mean is I have a convolution layer 
uh, let's say the first convolution layer is uh, of 16 filters and size 3 by 3 and on the first layer I should also men uh, mention the input shape of the file that I'm giving which is 256 by 256 of course uh, that is maintaining the size and I'm using the railway activation function and after that I have a max pulling layer and a dropout layer with 0.3 this is the first set of convolution max pulling and dropout layer I have three of those and on the second one and third one i'm just using 32 filters uh, with 3 by 3 size uh, and using the same activation function max pulling layer of 2 by 2 and drop out rate and uh, following these three sets of layers uh, i put a flattening layer in the middle so that it transforms the output of these convolution layers into a one dimensional vector basically so that i can uh, put a dense layer after that and that is actually what i have i have a fully connected dense layer with 258 neurons uh, with relu activation function and following that is my final output layer which gives me the probability of the classification problem with sigmoidal act uh, activation function and to perform the modal compilation i use binary cross entropy loss uh, adam optimization sorry adam optimizer and uh, i used accuracy as the evaluation matrix and by doing this, I was able to train the model by using the 14,000 images that I have. And this is the result of the training the data set. So while training the data set, uh, I use epochs of 10 and a batch size of 64 for each root loop. And you can see that the loss decreases uh, rapidly here at the beginning and slowly at the end as the number of epoch increases and accuracy is consistently increasing across the spectrum. And uh, at my final epoch, I have accuracy of 81.66%. On the training data set this is and uh, this was the result uh, for the testing data set now i use the 20 percent split that i separated for the testing data set which the model has not seen during the training phase to see how it does so by using the labels i have and the prediction that the model give the accuracy i got was 0 0.80 basically 80 percent 81 percent and this is the area under the curve uh, uh, ROC curve, sorry, uh, with area under the curve value being 0.87 as you can see in this plot. And now this is basically the confusion matrix for the training data set and the testing data set. And uh, of course the diagonal values are higher with correct predictions and uh, it looks like the model is doing a lot of its error in the term of it is predicting cracked images as uncracked in higher rate then predicting on crack as cracked as you can see in the both training and testing data set and next thing i did was uh, use the same model to uh, build the model again using the same model architecture by using a different set of data by using the data provided by firat uh, that they have put in kaggle and it, ha it basically has 20,000 cracked images and 20,000 on cracked images without any rotation or flipping so they are unique basically uh, so I use those images, I uh, pull them into my Python environment and I use the same model architecture to uh, build a model and then I fit the model by using only 5 epochs this time instead of 10. So since I did 90, 180 and 270 degree rotations, I now have 160,000 images in this data set. So by performing this on the 5th epoch, you can see I got an accuracy of 98% and on the training data, I put as 20% in the training data as well. The accuracy is nearly 98% and the diagonal values are of course higher. And in the ROC curve, you can see the end of the curve is very close to one. Now the last thing that I did uh, after I have the model, uh, so I uh, again went back to my model that I built with 14,000 images. So in that model, once I have the model ready, what I did was I created a new folder called two here where I put some new crack uh, and uncracked images uh, into that folder that the model has never seen either during the training phase or the testing phase. And I use the model that I already have to predict the value to make the prediction and get the prediction value in this variable called predictions. So and then basically show the results as a plot. Yeah, so this is the plot. So these four images that I fit into the model to predict, it predicted uh, these images as no cracks and these images as crack detected, of course. And this value that uh, you see here are basically the prediction value that the model gave. 
So basically, uh, less than 0 0.5, I'm considering them as no crack, and greater than 0 0.5, I'm considering them as crack. And so model is definitely certain that these two images are cracks, given that the value is one. And these two images, the model saying is no crack, which is true, which is only slightly less than 0 0.5, but still anything less than 0 0.5, since it is a binary problem, the model is predicting correct. Thank you.